Thanks again for tuning in to the third Grenfell Remembrance. We have been inundated with video contributions, which is testament to the love which prevails in this community and beyond. Indeed, we have too much to show everything tonight in full, but all messages will be made available in the coming days on the Grenfell United YouTube channel. So please do return and watch these heartfelt and powerful messages in their entirety.
Obviously today is a special day. It's hard to believe that it's three years now since the Grenfell Tower fire and it shares lots of quite difficult memories for this community. But it is a chance for us to come together, even if that is virtually, and, and share some of those memories. We're right by the Lancaster West Estate and we support over 3,000 local people each year. Prior to the Grenfell Tower fire, we supported over 300 families on the Lancaster West Estate each year, um, so tragically that meant that we lost many members of our centre. We do lots of things to remember Grenfell. We have a memory box actually, which is really lovely. So whenever a new member of staff joins our team, we make sure that we take them through the memory box and get out lots of photos and all sorts of things that students that tragically died in the fire had produced while they were at the centre. And we tell them stories about what we remember about them to make sure that they have an understanding of those people and that they feel better equipped to support um, other young people and adults that are coming to the centre and want to talk about people that they've lost. I think this is a remarkable community that has shown many times how it reaches out and supports each other and I think we're thinking carefully at the moment about how we can mark the anniversary so we we will be coming together and lighting candles, playing some of the music that we now associate with that time, um, sharing some of our memories of, of those people and thinking going forward what we can do to make things safer for people. As the fire was happening, some residents on the estate managed to open up the community centre on the estate which hadn't really been in use and it was used to sort donations um, and then it became a lot more in, in subsequent days, uh, I think about three days in. Susan started delivering art therapy from there. Art psychotherapy is a psychodynamic approach to therapy where children and adults are encouraged to use the art making as a process in order to kind of release their feelings and, and think about their emotions. You know, the, the centre's usually a hive of activity with people in and out, making hearts, doing different things, making banners. We can't do that this year, so we've been sending out packs to families with willow and tissue paper to make the hearts that you see on the silent walks. We're now also thinking about what things will look like as we come out of lockdown and how we can provide some sort of connection um, and rebuild those links that, that have been kind of stretched um, during COVID. Um, and that's really important to us because we know that that's what got everyone through Grenfell. And that's what people need now. Um, they really need that connection again, uh, especially a lot of the children are really missing their friends. Marking the three three year anniversary is very important because we're not there yet. You know, we haven't managed to make everybody safe. I mean, this this T-shirt was <laughs> says two years on, but it's now three years on, and we still have people living in tower blocks um, that are covered in cladding, and that's not okay. You know, that's not that's not okay. Hello, Ms. Adele here. I want to send my love to all of you today and let you know that I'm thinking of you, as I always do. And even though we're having to do this on, in the virtual world, online, on 2020 Zoom life as it is, it's still so important for us to mourn together and for us to remember that night and to reflect on that and also reflect on where we are now with that. But also to celebrate the lives that were lived before they were sadly taken that night. And I think that this year, more than ever, there has never been a more appropriate time for us to truly exercise camaraderie and compassion and open-mindedness and persistence. Persistence for answers and persistence for action. And it's a scientific fact that human beings are pack animals. We're not supposed to be left on our own. We need each other to survive. And that is something that I truly see in action with the Grenfell community. I have never been so moved or so inspired by a group of people before. Your resilience is second to none. No one, no one could expect anyone to have the amount of resilience that you guys have and your big hearts. I 
It's one of my proudest things to be involved with Grenfell United and to support your fight for true justice and also for the protection of other people, other people that you don't know and will never know. And I find that truly inspiring. And I'm so sad that we're not all together today because although it's always a very sombre event when everyone gets together, um, it's also beautiful. And the kids are running around and I can't wait to hear all about them. Um, and I know that before the anniversary next year that we can all do that and I can't wait. I can't wait to be there and I can't wait to see all of you. And I hope um, that, that everyone is able to get what they normally get then from this version that we're, that we're having to do this year. Um, but I miss you all and I can't wait to see you all. And like I said, I'm thinking of you today more than ever. Um, and stay safe, stay healthy. A poem by Ahmed and read by Jackie. I miss you. I miss you today more each day as I have every day since that day. You have gone, but never out of my mind, not even for a day. You are loved as always, forever and today. Yesterday has gone, but my love for you today, tomorrow and for eternity, my love for you will always stay. Yes, I cry with our memories, standing tall. If not for you, I would not have been here at all. Your kindness, your smile, your guile, your tranquil style, comforted by your love, your love for one and for all. Yes, I so miss you, for always, justice for Grenfell, forever in our hearts. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ar Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The 14th of June 2017 was the night that changed the lives of many people. That night at the Grenfell Tower, 72 people lost their lives. Today, many of us are still reminded of tragic losses as we live amongst a pandemic. But there's hope. Hope that the one who possesses true knowledge and true wisdom about each and every one of us, what he has decreed, we must rely on him and pray to him, Allah, to have mercy upon us all and to one day look back and find true justice. At this moment, we ask Allah, we beseech his mercy, to shower us in his mercy, to envelope us in his mercy and to give us patience. Nothing we say or nothing we do will change what has happened. But what we do know is there's wisdom in life and wisdom in death. And we do not control this, but we control how we act. We must be patient, we must be hopeful, and we must never lose the doubt that God is merciful and loves all his creatures. So upon that, I ask you to pray with me and to pray for the loved ones and to stay safe. My work changed overnight whilst I was sleeping. I got a phone call that uh, Grenfell Tower was ablaze and so we opened our building from 3 a.m. on that night, uh, receiving uh, victims of the fire and survivors. For us as an organization, um, it's about remembering um, the members, the young people that uh, were members of our youth club that uh, tragically passed away in, in the fire and we've got a portrait of uh, one of our prominent members, a young person dear to my heart. His name was Yassin, who died with the rest of his family. So we've got a big portrait that a homeless person painted when he wanted to do give back, he didn't have nothing. So we put him up in bed and board, gave him some food and he created a lovely mural for us. It's a constant reminder and we'll never forget him because he was such a, just a, a beautiful young person that we kind of worked with from the age of eight up until 21 and even when he left the club he was still coming back and um, providing uh, being a referee for the under sort of like 13s which was just really a wonderful thing you know a beautiful young person in 2017 we found ourselves with flames helicopters above us 
something we never thought we'd see in this country. We have volunteers who work in disaster zones around the world. We never realized we would have one on our doorstep. Still being in the United Kingdom, we're worried that this could happen again. We want to see changes being made in social equality that will stop putting people's lives at risk. During the COVID-19 outbreak, again, we're seeing people suffering. We learned from Grenfell that as a place of uh, faith, we need to be able to respond. And we hope that we can continue to do that. And we hope we can see the process of healing go further and that steps are done to make sure that we cannot see a repeat of what happened in Grenfell again. Vaiguji Kakalsa Vajfataji. We run local learning centres. We've got 31 of them and we support disadvantaged young people with their education. We're running a special project in memory of Khadija Say, who was one of our inter-university students. And Khadija Say was a hugely talented photographer. So we've developed a legacy programme called Into Arts, which is introducing young people to a wide range of artistic activities, including photography. It's just an amazing opportunity for us to introduce other Khadijas to art, to help them develop their own artistic abilities in memory of her. So Khadija's um, self-portraits are going to be on display at the British Library later this year and it's amazing that, that those works are inspiring our young people to develop their artistic abilities. Three years ago, 72 people lost their lives in a preventable tragedy. One of the lessons that I've learned from working with the community on the ground is how we need to change in the NHS the way that we've been working with the community. And that is one of the most valuable lessons that I have learned. So we have, over the last three years, taken the lessons from the community. We've worked alongside you. We've had some difficult conversations. We've tried to adapt our offer so that we're more flexible in the way that we, we work. We recognise that we're not the experts you are. We've listened to GU. We've listened. We've had some difficult conversations. And actually, we have adapted the way that we've worked. We know this is not just about North Kensington. This is about the wider NHS for us. This is something that you have made a difference in. We have shared those lessons in the trust that I work in, which covers a population of four million. We have shared those lessons about working alongside the community. Nationally, I've sat on platforms and talked about what we have done with you in Grenfell. I have also internationally with my colleagues shared the lessons of Grenfell about if you're going to be able to provide health services for a community, you have to work alongside it. You can't be the experts. The experts are the people who live in the community and you really need to listen what their needs are. And they will teach you the way to, to work with them. In terms of the future, this is three years on. There's still a lot to do. We've done a lot, but there's still a lot to do. For the future, for us, it's about carrying on working alongside you. With the NHS, we're not going anywhere. We've even learned the lessons in terms of the recent disaster, in terms of crisis around COVID. So we've applied some of the working alongside the community that we've learned from you. And we're now looking at the next, the next stage and how we need to work. The voices of the young people are really important. And we're really lucky at the NHS that we have recruited some ambassadors from the community, the Grenfell Health Ambassadors. And they will be the voices as well as yours that will be echoing in the future for the way we need to change and shape the NHS forever in our hearts.
originally started the day after Grenfell happened. Zoe, who originally started it, um, saw lots of kids running around, uh, didn't know what they were doing, kind of lost in this tragedy and you know for us adults it was it was quite frightening to see what was going on so for the kids she just wanted to set somewhere up with it, somewhere for them to sit. Some pens and paper, you know that's all it took and you know we went from there. It's a place to escape, it's a place to go to, it's a place to socialise. Um, unfortunately for some of them it's a place to come and get food as well, you know. Um, uh, but it's also just like, you know, it's, it's a fun place, it's a place they can come and they can be themselves, they can relax with their peers. So this year we are making green lanterns for the community while we're doing virtual videos and our young people and everyone who's involved can join our video, watch how it's made, and then on the day, they can come out their doorstep, light the lantern, film it, and then we're gonna put it all together and make um, a really nice video of lots of footage through over the years. 
Um, we've also asked a lot of our young people to write poems um, about Grenfell, how it may have affected them, or just something, you know, nice. There's a void in my life, a deep hollow, a space. I thought that I would let you know, just in case. It's not about me wallowing in time and space. I feel my loss, I feel his grace. His love was my fragrance, my interface. I miss his bear hugs, I miss his mischievous ways. I miss his warmth, yes, I do miss his grace, his embrace beautifully smiling face. But now, I have nothing. Nothing but his cherished memories. A smiling face I can never replace. Always in my heart, I love you, my dear uncle. Ismahan approached us to see if we'd be interested in devising a project that would involve the whole of the community. Um, and we started the project um, just before the first year memorial, which was the, the centrepiece that was created by the local community. And that was installed um, in time for June 2018. When we were planning for the mosaic, it was really important for us, to, for people to have a sense of ownership over it. So different community groups came together and um, in the first phase we had 12 groups and they came up with different terms to describe uh, what they think, thought the tragedy meant to them. So you've got things like unity and solidarity and respect and love and hope and resilience. And it means such a lot to people in terms of a mark of solidarity, of coming together, sharing an experience, a mark of remembrance really. The thing that I want to hold on to is the fact that this community will never give up. We will never give up in our quest for justice, and that means different things to different people, but we are going to fight and do everything to make the world just a little bit kinder and a little bit safer. We are bound by a tragedy, but we will never give up. It's always an incredibly emotional time, thinking about the people that we knew who didn't make it out, thinking about what they might be like now, you know, three years on. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In recent weeks, we have all been touched by the way in which the nation has come out in total support for the frontline workers and the NHS. It has shown us the way in which human beings can care for one another, show solidarity in the face of hardship, the way in which the community turned out that night and for weeks afterwards stands out clear in our memories. We salute the brave work of all those involved at that time, and yet the story goes on. We have now reached the third anniversary, and many people are living in difficult and emotional situations ever since. We need to remember them too, and rededicate ourselves, not to forget them, and to see their human needs are respected and met. We humans are one family, and we should not discriminate against each other, no matter how different we are or what background we come from. Every human being is of infinite value in the sight of God. Let us pray for the souls of the departed of Grenfell Tower, and strive for justice and human dignity, and the closure for the relatives. Let us hope that this spirit continues and we all behave as one family. Thank you. The initial response was uh, to open the door and welcome everyone because we heard it's a fire. So we opened the door to just welcome. And then uh, immediately that turned into uh, emergency support. So uh, food, uh, toiletries, and so on. So we became an emergency support center right from day one on the 14th of June 2017. Many of those who passed away in the fire used to be members here or uh, regulars here, so we do miss them and we can see where exactly they used to uh, stand or sit and, and so on. One important part of that is the Hub Community Kitchen. 
which has been supported by Meghan Markle. So uh, women from the tower as well as outside the tower come and use the community kitchen. The kitchen is now open seven days a week and the, around 20 women come. Some of them are survivors from the tower. At the same time when COVID-19 was uh, uh, announced as a pandemic uh, problem, immediately we were called on by the local NHS and the local uh, partners and we were asked if we could do something in response to this. I think the Grimfell tragedy has been painful to all of us, but there has been also a lot of good uh, that we may need to recognize and appreciate. One of those ones is the unity that has been displayed within the community, within the interface uh, section. We now have um, a very solid partnership in the interface uh, to the extent that we can represent each other uh, in respect of the, uh, of the differences of, uh, of religion. But we all feel now united. We have lots of commonalities uh, and shared values which we are celebrating. Sending you our love on this, the third anniversary of Grenfell Tower Fire. I can hardly believe it's three years on and still no justice has been served in any way. The fight goes on, the healing goes on, the work goes on. We're faced with another crisis right now in terms of the global pandemic and our response to COVID. We have been amazed, inspired and took hope from the community in North Kensington that once again have rose to its feet and helped those with little and help those that are lost and help those that really need a helping hand at a difficult time. Even now, today when I'm recording this, I'm still in horror at the injustice that's going on all around the world, not just with pandemic, but with racism and intolerance everywhere. The thing I've taken from Grenfell, the glimmer of hope, was that on the 14th of June, 2017, from the worst of humanity, I saw the best of humanity. And it's that that I'll be thinking about on the 14th of June. Sending you our love from everyone at Rugby Portobello Trust. At the end of the National Memorial Service for Grenfell that was held at St Paul's Cathedral, the children from the local schools were invited to come up and underneath the dome of St Paul's on the floor they scattered these little paper green hearts, each with a message from other members of their school family. And one of the very first of those messages that landed very near my feet, it said quite simply, a message from a child in year four, I wish this didn't happen to you. Sums up the feelings of the whole nation. And so my prayer is today, firstly for those who died, that they may have eternal rest and that perpetual light will shine upon them. And my prayer is for you. May God bless you. May God bless you and keep you. And may God bless all those that you love. God bless. It's been three years since the events of that awful night when 72 Londoners tragically lost their lives at Grenfell Tower. But I know that the agony and grief has not diminished and that our collective desire for justice remains undimmed. We join together to recall and commemorate the lives of those we lost. They were young and old, neighbours and loved ones, grandparents, parents, children and siblings. Many had their whole lives ahead of them. Others had a lifetime of stories to tell, but still so much to offer. Today is about reaffirming our commitment to never forgetting them. We'll continue to raise our voices because questions still need to be answered. The truth still needs to come out and justice still needs to be done. You'll never be alone in this struggle. You have a whole city standing with you. As soon as Grenfell took place, we found out that a family who we loved dearly passed away. Um, Nora, um, Yahya, Ferdaus, Jakob, 
and their father all passed away. So we felt completely traumatized and we were so, so sad. We went all around the local hospital was trying to find them, but unfortunately we didn't locate any of them, so they perished. And we wanted to try to do something positive from such a terrible event. And having had a conversation with a close friend of Ferdows, we found out that it was her dream to go to Disneyland. So within a few months, we raised the funds to take a small group of children to Disneyland Paris to fulfill the dream of Ferdows. And that was like a mixed holiday. In a sense, we were really happy to fulfill her dream, but the emotions were still very raw. So there was still a lot of anguish and we still felt very sad that she was not with us. So for us, the most important thing is that our families do not feel like they have been forgotten during the COVID crisis. Even though there's been a lot of um, isolation, one thing's isolating physically, but emotionally, you can still have that relationship. So for us, it's really important that we stay in contact with our families. Hello. My name's Margaret Aspinall from the Hillsborough Family Support Group. I'd just like to send this short message to the Grenfell families. Now, I know at the moment it's a hard struggle for you all, as it has been for the Hillsborough families over 30 odd years. I would ask you all, please do not give up, no matter what anything will happen for the future or now. Please never give up. You will fight for what you believe in and you will eventually achieve the outcome that you rightfully deserve. So please, I wish you all the very, very best of luck. And as I've said, it took us 30 years to get where we are today. And I just hope and pray it doesn't take all of you that long. I hope you get it a lot, lot sooner because that is what you all deserve. Good luck and best wishes from all the families of the HFS tree. Hold your head up high And don't be afraid of the dark At the end of a storm There's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark Walk on through the wind Walk on through the rain Though you dream Within communities, quite often my experience was the disconnect between communities and the actual service gave rise to poor uptake in the service, but also poor uptake from other uh, groups, uh, groups that we didn't understand. One of the things that I've learned through uh, my Grenfell experience is how to engage with communities in a way that feels like as if it isn't about lip service, it isn't about tokenistic gestures. Um, it's about how you can collaborate, how you can use the assets of the community to be able to build a service and design a service and deliver it to meet the needs of that community. I'd like to think just briefly with you about the last three years that I've experienced this service and I want to say that it's been an absolute privilege to be on this uh, learning curve. I feel like as if a, a practitioner who's got effectively 25 years left of her career 
that it's definitely going to enhance my ability to be able to deliver um, really worthwhile care to other communities. Yo guys, hope you're good. Hope everyone's good in these crazy times. I just wanted to say, always thinking about you, man. Always, always, always. Seriously, so much love for you guys. I'm gonna keep spreading the cause as much as I can do. Everything that I can do with my power to help. I will, you know, you always got an ally in me, man. Anything you guys need, just let me know. I'll try and help any way that I can. Much love, guys. Over the whole weekend, we'll be doing our best to turn spaces green for Grenfell. Green for Grenfell was something that was started as a hashtag by local schools. Um, and as an artist and designer, I felt that if we could make use of that and take it a step further to creating really green spaces, it would help people feel that they were together, feel a sense of solidarity. And also green as a color is just, it's healing. It's all about healing. Has it really been three years? Has it really been three years since the day some of us escaped? Has it really been three years since the memories that I have taken? Has it really been three years since my heart began to ache? Has it really been three years since my soul began to break? Goodbye to my family. Goodbye to my friends, goodbye to my neighbours, and goodbye to my home. Has it really been three years since the day of the screams? Has it really been three years since the visions of extremes? Has it really been three years since 72 people were snatched away? Has it really been three years since we thought we were all here to stay? 14th of June was when we thought they were going to follow. The 14th of June was when we all began to feel hollow. The 14th of June was when the community felt the pain. The 14th of June was when the memories became a stain. Has it really been three years since the banging on the windows could be heard? Has it really been three years since the community came out in herds? Has it really been three years since we all began to pray? Has it really been three years since we wished our loved ones could have stayed? Imagine if we can turn back time and undo the suffering. Imagine if we could turn back time and take away the bustling. Imagine if we could turn back time and did not have to pretend. Imagine if we can turn back time and take away their end. Has it really been three years since we could hear your laughter? Has it really been three years since 72 of you went to the hereafter? Has it really been three years since the vivid memories etched on my mind? Has it really been three years since it became clear that rules need to be refined? Has it really been three years since questions are still unanswered forever in our hearts. It's difficult to believe that it's been three years since the Grenfell tragedy. While it may seem that the rest of the world has moved on, I want you to know that from the heart of the Jewish community, we have not forgotten you. This tragedy touched so many lives and we hope and pray that Almighty God continues to support the families of the victims and gives comfort to those who have been affected by this. We also hope and pray that God helps us to learn how to seek empathy over fear, respect over intolerance, and to choose love over hate. And may we all learn to help strengthen the bridges that we've built between our communities for many, many years to come, to build a better society for all humankind. We are in such unprecedented times for COVID-19. After the dreadful tragedy, it's given us the learning and experiences to help us fight this pandemic. Working closer within our community, within the NHS, our partners, but most importantly, with our bereaved and survivor families. 
With a three year anniversary approaching, our thoughts are with the breed and survivor families, our patients. We will never give up and our thoughts are with you all forever in our hearts. Third anniversary of our 72 loved ones. Distance takes us far apart and darkens our today. We have to keep remembering you're just the thought away. When the world is too confusing, times are hard to bear. You pull your precious meaning, your bright spirit from the air. If we sometimes drift into a lonely state of mind, we gather up the memories, the days we left behind. And though you're not beside us, we can tap into our hearts and draw upon the warmth and love that lives when we're apart. And with these fond reflections on the times when you were near, we sense a little bit of what it's like to have you here. Yo, what's going on, people? Um, it's Stormzy here. Um, today marks the third anniversary of the um, Grenfell Tower file. And I said I was just going to put the camera on and just talk from my heart instead of trying to prepare anything. So I didn't want this to sound like it came from anywhere other than my heart. Um, to all the people of Grenfell, we're still mourning with you. So to anyone watching this, let's use this time. Let's use today to stand in solidarity with them and say that we ain't forgotten you. We love you. We're here for you. Um, when the governments and the powers that be have turned their back on you, we're here, we're here, we got you, like, we, we, we remember, we're here, like, we're not letting this go, do you know what I mean? Because as much as our, my life's moved on, your life's moved on, unless you had someone in that fire who you directly lost, whether it was your family, your friend, your sister, your mother, your brother, your father, like, our lives have moved on, but that is still a dark reality that these people have to face all the time, like... Grenfell is still a reality for these people. It, it was just it was just a day, it was just a week, it was just a month for us. It was a green heart, it was a badge, it was a tweet, but that's still a dark reality for these people. So please, let's remember that. Let's stand with them today, let's mourn with them today. To the people of Grenfell, I'm so upset that this pandemic, COVID-19, um, is the reason we can't be together today. Um, what, I've, what I've seen for myself first-handed is that I've watched the community, the people of Grenfell, the people of Labrador, the people of West London, I've watched them take a dark tragedy and turn it into triumph and turn it to joy and turn it to togetherness and friendship and brotherhood and sisterhood and family. And whenever I'm around the Grenfell lot, whenever I'm, whenever, wherever I'm in Grove, whenever it's an anniversary or an event, I'm, I'm, full, I'm, I'm filled with so much love and joy because I'm just watching these people who have turned this tragedy into triumph. And I'm just like, this is one of the most remarkable, amazing things I've ever seen. So you guys, I love you. I wish I could be there with you and and bring whatever joy I can to, to everyone's situation, but we're gonna link up soon. I love you guys, we're always here. Never forget what happened at Grenfell. Please, never ever forget. And yeah, I love you guys. and. You lot inspire me because you lot have managed to remain so resilient in the face of the most darkest, darkest, darkest tragedy that p people should never experience. Do you know what I mean? I don't think humans should experience what you guys have experienced. I, I, I don't, I don't know how how we have the mental, emotional threshold for that, but somehow you bunch of super, superheroes do, and we love you guys. You're legendary. Um, and I'm always here in whatever capacity. God bless, love you guys, and never ever forget about Grenfell. Hello, I'm Claire Murdoch. I'm the Chief Exec of CNWL. I am glad to be with you today, albeit virtually, to pay my respects, to tell you on the third anniversary of Grenfell how I never cease to be humbled and amazed by the love, resilience and determination of the incredible people of Grenfell. So thank you for letting CNWL be part of your journey. Thank you for placing your trust in us. 
we work hard never to let you down. This three years feels like a blink of an eye, no time at all, and like a lifetime. But what I want you to know is we will walk with you for as long as you need us, with humility and love, and you are forever in our hearts. Here at Latimer, at the third anniversary of Grenfell, we want you to know that whilst our church building may be closed, we continue to stand together praying for justice and for peace and remembering with love the many who we have lost to our community. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he grant you peace. Amen. Sometimes you'll be given what you wanted just to show you it is not at all what you needed. I remember often walking past the homes of how the other half lived. High rise ceilings, gates and fences, private parking spaces, and homes that probably cost the same amount as a small private jet. The closer I got to home, the more the divide became apparent. High rise buildings, council estates, and definitely not a gate or a fence in sight. Even the street properties with three to four separate flats in them. You could tell which one were homeowners and which ones were social housing just by how they looked from the outside. I remember sometimes walking past the homes of how the other half lived and saying to myself, one day. It's funny how one of the labels the government and council gave us was displaced because even though I feel somewhat settled where I am now, a part of me will always feel displaced. It's a bittersweet feeling. There's almost a feeling of selfishness and ungrateful. My home was replaceable, but the lives of the people we lost that night were not. The comments outsiders looking in has infuriated me. We've been called things like privileged, lucky, and that we get special treatment. They nearly killed us. They killed 72 of our loved ones. What part of that is lucky and what part of that makes us privileged? This was much more than losing the place I called home. I, like many others, lost myself. We lost innocent friends, neighbours and family members. All because those who had a duty to us did not ensure our safety was a priority. There was no special treatment. It was the opposite. While there have been some achievements and some progress made, equally, there are still obstacles and battles that we have to fight just to ensure changes are made. There is no special treatment. But we will continue to fight those battles. We will continue to ensure the safety of others is a priority. We will continue to ensure changes are made and we will continue to fight for justice for our loved ones. It's been three years since we went to sleep at night and tragically, that was the last time our loved ones laid their heads to rest. It's been three years since our normal came to an end. It's been three years since many of us got a good night's sleep. It's been three years since our community came together and also fell apart. It's been three years since we smiled genuine smiles and laughed genuine laughs. It's been three years since our lives changed forever. And I'd happily say goodbye to what I wished for three times over if it meant we could have our loved ones back with us and none of this ever happened. Three years, 72 loved ones, forever in our hearts. Faith communities have long memories. This means that we, we don't forget the important things of the past, but we, we don't discard them and we continue to be able to learn from them and to draw strength from them. And just two weeks ago, we had the festival of, of Pentecost, which was the 31st of May. And, and we remember in our tradition that experience when God's power and God's Holy Spirit was poured out upon people and it changed them. It, it gave them a unity in their diversity. It provided confidence instead of fear. It gave reassurance instead of doubt. And it, and it provided solidarity in a community where truth and justice became hallmarks.
many years ago there was a, a saint of the Christian church called Saint Augustine and he wrote a prayer that said that our hearts are restless until they find our hearts in thee, in God. And that's true for us too, for our hearts and our grateful hearts remain restless. They remain restless until our community experiences that unity that has truth and justice and peace and we all inhabit that experience together and know that things will be different. We can have change. We can learn from what's happened. This will never happen again. So as we, in our silence, in our different and separated ways, commemorate the Grenfell Tower anniversary, we join together as members of a faith community and many others in saying, forever in our hearts.
On the 14th of June 2017, Grenfell Tower burnt through the night into the early hours of the morning and into the early hours of that evening. This community was left to the commotion and chaos. The people that were here to pick up the community were people from other communities, rather than any authorities, rather than anyone responsible for, for the, what had happened that night. You know, it became important about like kind of mobilizing as a community. And, and it was just kind of, you know, a natural movement to kind of bring people together. And we decided to walk on, on the 14th of each month. It was the first time in like a week or two of, of, of being in, in absolute, what felt like a war zone. It was the first time where there was a very, very fast power of empowerment. There was an energy in the air of and something very bone chilling about so many hurt people and so many wounded people walking in absolute silence, in absolute unity. And during the, the pandemic of COVID-19, it hurt so much to not be able to, to walk and feel that connection of energy between the thousands of people who come and show support. And we know people are still out there showing their support from their homes. And what we want to say is that we will come together again once this is cleared up and we will walk and we will strategize and we will come with new tactics to make sure that we are heard and to make sure that this movement doesn't stop and that justice comes. As usual, I want to read the list of names for those we lost that night on the 14th of June. Abdul Salem Sabah. Ali Yawa Jafari, Dennis Murphy, Muhammad Al Haj Ali, Jeremiah Dean, Zainab Dean, Stephen Power, Sheila Smith, Joe Joseph Daniels, Hasna Begum. Kamru Mia, Muhammad Hamid, Muhammad Hanif, Rabea Begu, forever in our hearts. Forever in our hearts. Khadija Kalufi, Vincent Chijina, Fatima Afra Sahabi, Sakina Afra Sahabi. Isaac Paulus, Hamid Kani, Bertie Hafton, Baruch Hafton, Gary Maunders, Deborah Ramp Lampro, forever in our hearts. Forever in our hearts. <laughs> Ernie Vital, Marjorie Vital, Maria Del Pilar Burton. Amal Ahmadi, Amaya Tuka Ahmadi, Amna Mahmoud Idris, Muhammad Noor Tukur, Victoria King, Alexandra Atla, Atala, sorry, Mary Mendy, Khadija Singh, forever in our hearts. Forever in our hearts. Bara Hamid Belkadi, Nina Belkadi, Malik Belkadi, Omar Belkadi, Jessica Urbano, Nigaya Moore, Abdullah Aziz El Hawabi, Baiza El Hawabi, Mehdi El Hawabi, Nurhadu El Hawabi, Yasid El Hawabi, forever in our hearts. Forever in our hearts. Logan Gomez, Fadors Hashim. Hashim Kadir, Nura Jamal, Yahya Hashim, Yaqub Hashim, Fatma Shakir, Myrna Shakir, Nadia Shakir, Sierra Shakir, Zainab Shakir, Basim Shakir, forever in our hearts. Forever in our hearts. Anthony Tony Disson, Maryam El Gawari, Islah El Gawari, Raymond Bernard, Gloria Trevison, Marco Gittardi, Fetia Hassan, Hanya Hassan, 
Ronya, Ibrahim, Hisham, Rahman, Muhammad, Saiba, Amid Nada, Abu Fras, Ibrahim, Isra, Ibrahim, Fatia, Ali Ahmed, Al Sanusi. Forever in our hearts. Three years on from Grenfell, the emotion is still raw. We still don't have all the answers, but we know the refurbishment of Grenfell Tower was illegal and poorly executed. A preventable tragedy caused by cost cutting with no regard for safety. A landlord that failed us, a council that betrayed us, and companies driven by corporate arrogance and greed. Three years on, companies, corporations, national and local government want us to forget. They want to be forgotten, but we will never forget. Arconic, we say your name. Ryden, we say your name. KCTMO, RBKC, we say your names. Exova, Harley, Celotex, we all say your names. Do not distance yourselves from Grenfell. You are to blame. If you think we will forget your role in this disaster, you are gravely mistaken. To those of you that try to anonymize yourself, know this. When the world hears or sees your name, they will remember you were responsible for the loss of life at Grenfell Tower. Three years on, and you refuse to admit guilt, you still accept no responsibility, but the evidence is overwhelming. And the truth will come out, because the truth matters. But we have learned that our truth is not treated equally to yours. Our loved ones spoke the truth in exchange for the right to a safe home. Our loved ones spoke the truth, but in exchange were bullied and made to feel imprisoned in unsafe homes. Now the corporates will only tell the truth in exchange for some protection from prosecution. The system once again works to protect the powerful, so three years on, we are still fighting for the truth. Fighting the fear of all those responsible not learning again. And we are still fighting for change. Change is not optional. It is long overdue. In the construction industry, change is inevitable. Only change will save lives. Will you, the industry, propose effective changes yourselves? Or will you wait for it to be imposed upon you? The level of incompetence and toxic behavior leading to and during the Grenfell Tower refurbishment is incomprehensible. It was immoral and humane. The purpose of the building regulations is to preserve life. And some of you massaged your way around them, compromising the safety of our lives. To the government, the building regulations are not fit for purpose. There are thousands of high-risk buildings across the country with flammable materials. Grenfell is not just about high-rises. It's about making homes safe irrespective of their height because everyone deserves a safe home. There is still no plan B to stay put. Are we ready for another Grenfell? How many more lives must we lose until change comes? How many more lives will we risk in social housing in the private sector? How long must people suffer the fear and financial ruin of living in an unsafe home? How many more anniversaries must pass before we see justice, accountability and change? Which brings us to justice. Justice is complicated. The emotion is still raw for us. There was the complexity of how people lost their loved ones. The complexity of how those who survived made it out. And those that survived but lost loved ones along the way. Our different encounters and experiences before, during and after the fire has shaped what justice looks like for each of us. For some families, 
the truth would provide peace and closure. For others, that is not enough. And reputational damage, financial penalties, safer homes, and most importantly, imprisonment are needed to feel at peace. Sometimes we cannot even talk and agree among ourselves what accountability looks like because of the overwhelming failures and pain we had to endure. We hear Grenfell talked about as the poor cousin. That phrase symbolizes the inequality and the neglect of our voice, the inequality of human life. But Grenfell has also united us. Grenfell has united the bereaved, the survivors and the local community and everyone across the country living in unsafe homes. And whatever our differences, we will remain united until justice comes. Three years on, we have a message for those responsible. Three years on, we reflect on your failures while you choose to hide them. We reflect on our pain and suffering while you choose to ignore it. We remember the names of our loved ones while you try to change yours. We remember the night while you do not recall it. We keep telling the truth while you keep telling lies. We reflect on who passed and survived even as you, our landlord, have no record of who they were. We reflect on those that suffocated from the smoke while you continue to breathe freely. We want to move on, but you continue to delay and deny. Three years on, we remain determined for truth, justice and change. 72. Forever in our hearts. The anniversary means, means progress. It means another year that's gone by where we carry our pain and we carry our, our struggle and our fight for justice forward. I think it's another year where we become more resilient and we learn to live with that pain and learn to lean into the struggle and be more determined to find justice. Justice is a big word. You know, it's, um, I think it means lots of things to different people. For me, justice is about the injustices that happen on a daily level. Um, it's about the injustices that have gone on for many hundreds of years. Justice for me is about accounting for all of those injustices, uh, one by one. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Hydra. Hydra. It's another one of them late ones again. Insomnia, you need to allow me in Yeah. If there ain't no justice, there ain't no peace. There ain't no love, we at war with the beast. If there ain't no you, then there ain't no me. They don't know you, and they don't know me. If there ain't no justice, there ain't no peace. There ain't no love, we at war with the beast. If there ain't no you, then there ain't no me. They don't know you, and they don't yeah. know me. If there ain't no justice, there ain't no peace. Nah. We don't care about the politics or police. We don't care. Nightmares at night got me scared to go sleep. Quite when it's quiet, when it's loud, I'm still hearing those screams. Wishing this could all be a dream, but it's not. My friends don't understand, so inside I feel lost. I feel Can't lost. imagine those bereaved, how they feel. They my heroes, my yeah. heart's more than cold, so pass chill with Sub Zero. I do this for the ones that we lost. I know you're here with me. I know you're here. We scream GU for life, I know you're here with me. I, I shed a tear and speak, cause rapping is my therapy. My therapy. I do this cause I'm meant to for the cause, not voluntarily. I hope that out the man, the man, them out there could feel my pain. Feel my One pain. of the lucky ones. I guess cause I still remain uh, I'd be lying if I said that I'd be still the same Yo. I'd be lying if I said that I feel the same if There ain't no justice, there ain't no peace There ain't no love, we at war with the beast If there ain't no you, then there ain't no me They don't know you, and they don't know me If there ain't no justice, there ain't no peace There ain't no love, we at war with the beast If there ain't no you then there ain't no me They don't know you And they don't know me If there ain't no justice There ain't no peace There ain't no love We at war with the beast If there ain't no you Then there ain't no me They don't know you And they don't know me If there ain't no justice There ain't no peace There ain't no love We at war with the beast If there ain't no you Then there ain't no me They don't know you they don't know me. It is our duties, it is our responsibilities to make sure that 
we never, ever, 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 ever forget about Grenfell and what happened that day. And that we constantly remind ourselves, our people and the world, our country about what happened that day. We can never, ever, ever forget Grenfell. And the reason, I, the reason why I say this is because I still can't fathom how that many lives were lost in the way in which they were lost. And to this day, there is no justice, there's no accountability, there's no one behind bars, there's nothing. Um, I still can't fathom the circumstances before it, the circumstances during the fire and the circumstances after it. And let me explain that by saying this, we had a community who were screaming out, who were filing, who done all the proper, who took all the proper routes, were making all the official complaints and they were crying and screaming out to the councils, to the authorities, to the government, saying that the cladding on this building is illegal, this cladding on this building is unsafe and we need, we need new cladding. And they were constantly denied, rejected and ignored. And then what that left us with was the greatest tragedy I've seen in this country in my 26 years of life. And which I think I will hand on my heart say is the greatest injustice I've ever seen in terms of I cannot fathom how there's been no one put in prison for this. The councils, the authorities, the governments ignored the whole community and ended up destroying lives, destroying families, destroying, like, I, I, I find it, it's become my duty and everyone else's duty to make sure that we never forget this. Let this be a constant reminder. Let this be a constant dark stain on British society in terms of that many lives were lost and the world just kept moving. Like, there's still, there's not been any justice. Like, let that be a constant reminder. A lot of things have changed and a lot of things remain the same. And I think this is the, 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 irony of the situation you know the battle for for that for the saving our community started within the 10 years previous right so for years before that we'd been actually actively actively involved in trying to save our community from the regeneration there were a lot of battles going on for different resources and different community spaces grenfell expose what was going on. Prior to that, we were dealing with something that was seen as a very local battle. So it was hard to get what was happening to us to a wider level, people to be aware of what was going on. It was Grenfell that opened that up and actually people started to see what was going on in the richest borough in the country. On June the 14th when it happened, we were all very connected and aware of what was going on politically and what was going on on a wider level in terms of the council's policies, what was going to be happening with our housing and the buildings that were under threat, right? Like the library and the college. So that is somewhere where we can say that there was change in terms of what the plans originally were to strip all the assets from the community, right? I'd say what hasn't changed is the culture of the, the, um, the local council, central government, the whole institutionally racist practice, the fact that there's still a post-colonial mindset. That's because of the strategies that have been used to divide and rule the community to prevent us from getting justice. Uh, this is a really valuable community asset we're standing in front of now. This is our local college. Uh, it's been here for many years, many decades, providing valuable education and social experiences for the entire community. We're campaigners, you know, we, we're activists. There's, there's just activity and action going on everywhere. People love the community, people uh, love their local spaces and we'll fight for them when necessary. So I've worked on a number of campaigns in the local area. We've got the library campaign where we saved a 125 year old local landmark from becoming a private school. Uh, we've got the Westway and that's a 23 acre stretch of land just across the road here and that was a space that was fought for and won by our local community. 
On the local level, a lot has changed in terms of public space. The sort of asset stripping attitude that the local government had prior to that is not still there. So these are important achievements. I think there's been a change in the regulations. So A1 and A2 have been established as something that should be expected in new builds. Um, I think the problem with that is it can't be retrospectively applied. What I fear and what I worry about is the fact that we have a situation where the population, rather than being able to see themselves in this community, I feel they have exceptionalized the circumstances. So because of the spectacle of the fire and how dramatic it was and how extreme it was, I think people around the country just find it hard to believe that they may be in buildings where the same thing could potentially happen. What essentially that means is you have people in a lockdown situation in buildings that are like Grenfell. There hasn't been the action that needs to take place in order to uh, guarantee those people's safety. I think that is a major failing on consecutive uh, governments. There needs to be the mechanisms within government to make prosecutions as soon as possible. There may have been um, situations where people have been questioned, but we have not seen arrests. And that's something that people really, really need to see. There's still the same problems that caused the tragedy are still there. I mean, there are so many people currently living in homes that aren't safe because they've got unsafe cladding on them. There are so many people living in houses that are over here, we call them temporary residents, but they've been temporary residents for 20, 25 years, living in places where they have no security of tenure, bringing up their kids there, then they could be evicted at any minute. And there's been very little change in the way the, the government regards social tenants. I thought uh, Grenfell would be a wake-up call for them and they will change their behavior, treating uh, people on social housing with dignity. That hasn't changed. Everyone in society needs to look at what social housing is about. It's providing a safety net for people and it's providing good, stable homes for people who, that don't cost a fortune. Property isn't about making money for corporations, it's about people's lives. And that seems to have gotten forgotten somewhere along the way with all of this. What's emerged in the three years since Grenfell is that there appears to be an endemic problem with the safety of high rise buildings in the UK. And that means cladding is really indicative of a system which over a number of years has not placed enough of an emphasis on fire safety and has not placed enough of an emphasis on human life. I think for me personally as a journalist covering this story, what I've found inspiring and where I've found hope in um, what's emerged since the fire is that both survivors groups and um, groups which have sprung up from other buildings with issues have, have simply refused to take that line down, um, they've pushed back and they've won some really important gains in terms of safety, which will have a lasting impact. Um, combustible materials are now banned outright and unequivocally for new buildings over 18 metres in height, and that height threshold is likely to come down. Going into the removal of dangerous cladding to having £1.6 billion being poured into it, and, and that has resulted directly from the pressure that's been put on um, by the survivors of the Grenfell Tower fire and, and the residents of the buildings um, where other dangerous cladding systems exist. So we've seen that the system itself when people join together and, and push and call for change, then they can achieve something. We find ourselves sharing the three-year anniversary of the Grenfell Tower tragedy with a national coronavirus pandemic. At Grenfell United, we found there are very many similarities between the government's response to coronavirus and the way that we were treated at Grenfell. We experienced inaction we experienced indifference. We experienced victim blaming. The same victim blaming that was experienced by the NHS when the health secretary accused them of using up all the PPE. We were accused at Grenfell of refusing the sprinkler system by the leader of the council, Nick Paget Brown. Three years on from Grenfell, we have three main aims, truth, justice, and change. Truth will come to us through the public inquiry. 
a public inquiry that has been repeatedly delayed by the actions of the corporate core participants who on one hand tell us that they're determined to cooperate fully, that they are innocent and that they grieve with us for our loss. And yet on the other hand, on the eve of the start of phase two, they implement their privilege to the right of non-self-incrimination, holding up the inquiry for months on end, delaying our right to justice and to truth. And if we're seeking change, we're seeking change that will see this dangerous cladding removed from the 468 buildings it still remains on, change that will see a change of culture inside the construction industry and inside social housing, and we need to see the implementation of the recommendations of phase one from Sir Martin Warbick's phase one report. Hi, my name is Francesca and I'm reading a letter on behalf of Marcos' parents. Good morning, everybody. We are Janine and Daniela, the parents of Marco, the young Italian architect who lost his life with his beloved fiancé Gloria in the fire of the Grenfell Tower. These two young adults graduated with honours from the University of Architecture in Venice in 2016 and decided to undertake their careers in London, a multicultural and multi-ethnic city, to enrich their cultural and professional backgrounds. They left their hometowns on the 4th of March 2017 and in under two months they found work as architects and, uh, albeit temporary, a beautiful apartment in the Grenfell Tower and in doing so they felt happy because they were making their dreams come true. On the 14th of June a fire ended their lives along with 70 other people living family members, many friends and people who knew them in pain and despair. This disaster did not happen by chance, but was caused by lack of care and responsibility, which leads back to the great evil of today's society, human greed, or the constant search of for greater earnings, trampling on any regulations and on basic human rights. The ongoing investigations have revealed fault on several fronts, from design to construction to lack of building control to poor maintenance, bad restoration and to the absolute inadequate rescue attempt. After three years, the second phase of investigations has only just started and as a consequence we have to wait long periods of time for the conclusion and for the subsequent court hearing. Despite this, we still have faith in the investigators and more generally in British justice system. We are deeply saddened and incredulous at the total absence of Her Majesty's government as well as offended by the statements of the former minister, Mr. Jacob Rees-Mogg. How can one of the major British institutional body invite citizens not to respect laws, rules, regulations, and what was stated in the building security norms? This is absurd. We hope that the many culprits will come forward and admit their faults. We still believe in the pursuit of the truth and hope those who are responsible for this terrible and avoidable tragedy will be brought to justice. We hope that what happened on the 14th of June 2017 will serve as a lesson to the government as well competent bodies and professional to carefully evaluate safety regulation and the material using construction and renovation, both civil and industrial. We thank everyone who went the extra mile to raise funds for the victims' families and all those who were close to us. A special mention also goes out to all the London charities whose goal is not to forget this tragedy and to make sure that justice prevails. A special thank you to the Grenfell United. 
to remember Marco, Gloria and the other 70 victims, to raise people awareness on safety and to help talented young students, we have created the Grenfell Love Marco and Gloria Honors Foundation, whose website can be found online, also in English at www.grenfelllove.org. With the same goals in mind, architect Peregrine Bryant, owner of the Peregrine Bryant Architecture Studio in London, where Gloria used to work, has founded the Gem Award. A warm thank you to this great man. Thank you and best wishes, Giannino Gottardi and Daniela Burigot. We have changed as a community. We've grown. No community should have gone through what we've gone through. Uh, it's made us stronger. I know it sounds like a cliche, but I think we all realize it's a long road. We are still seen as second class citizens. And us as people living in this community, having witnessed what we witnessed that night, seeing people dying as second class citizens, as if their lives didn't matter, the change really we are we're looking for, we're longing for, is that change where we as individuals are at the center of those decisions that affect us. I think we need a serious shift in power relations. I think we need to rebalance the relationship between the landlord and the tenant. And I think landlords need to be reminded that they are serving us and they are meant to provide us a service. We have no power to hold them accountable. And that's the key change that we need, that power of accountability, a real power of accountability. We want people to speak for themselves. That's the core of our mission, empowering people. Because they are very capable and we believe in that the skills are in this community. They just need somebody to support them and that's why we're here. There's been some change that I know that has happened in this borough with the housing management, but uh, there needs to be a lot more to come. So we'll have to just don't, don't hold your breath for it, but it will, I think it will happen. There's a problem, there's a fundamental problem with social housing, and it's twofold. One, is that there's not enough of it, so they need to build a whole lot more, hundreds of thousands of more, if there's a will to address the housing crisis and eliminate homelessness. And two is the um, stigma that's been attached to it in the last, from the last 10 years up to now. People need to be happy where they live and when there is a proper decent social housing provided and enough of it and enough people live in those houses and they feel proud of where they live the stigma will be removed easily that tragedy at least okay it's happened we are where we are but i'm hoping that um, it, it would lead to something good i'm hoping something good will come out of it as we remember the 14th of June 2017, the atrocity that killed so many of our neighbours, our friends and our loved ones, in 2020 we find ourselves in a world that yet again holds a mirror up to the inequalities in our society. Grenville did exactly that. It held a mirror to the fact that actually the residents were not listened to, the fact that they predominantly came from a Muslim background. We look at the judicial system in America, the justice system, the brutality of the police, and we reflect on the fact that actually black lives mattered, both here in Grenfell and they matter in America. They matter all over the world, where black people face discrimination, brutality and death. They matter also because we now see that actually a disproportionate number of black people are dying from COVID-19. And they die because of the discrimination, the institutional racism that they face, the jobs they do. We as black people, as the Windrush generation, as the immigrants, we are now realizing, and I hope the whole country is realizing, that we are essential to the running of the society. If we want to have justice for those 72 ones who need, people who needlessly lost their lives, we need to see some systemic change, and we need to see the change that's been demanded by the bereaved and survivors. Removal of cladding, 
that still not happened. Changes in regulations that still not happened. For me personally, it's a bit, it feels weird watching everything that's been happening after COVID-19 as well, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, it's, it's, it's beautiful to see people come together and it gets to a stage in life where enough's enough. And the more people that wake up to that and the more people who realize that enough's enough, more can be done for change. We shouldn't be here three years on still trying to shout for justice and still trying to, you know, get the change and still trying to make sure that people are safe within their homes. Like it's, it's three years on and 72 people, whether we like to hear it or not, were murdered that night. We haven't had justice because the state was culpable, right? The state was culpable in the many layers of the situation that Brentford was. You know, you would not expect that three years after 72 people died in West London, not a single person's been arrested, not a single person's been charged. You know, there's delayed justice. The only way that people can begin to heal and to overcome their loss and to, and to really move forward in a positive way is when we have some sense of justice. When we're talking about justice, I think there's still a lot of people who have some resentment, there are unanswered questions. You know, and people just, you know, they like, they want answers. Someone has to take accountability for what happened. To me, that's, that, it has to happen. That just can't slide. If we don't keep pushing, I think things will just go back to the way they were. There's a lot of forces trying to move it back so we can get back to the way they were before carrying on making money and brush it all under the carpet. Even with the inquiry and all the um, noise that was made about it, we're still nowhere. We're still nowhere. Nobody's been um, held accountable. The system that has set itself up to protect itself is not going to give us justice. Yeah? That is something we have to create by demanding it, by instigating it, by... We can't depend on the legal system that oppresses us to give us justice. 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 Please stay with us um, as we are about to go live to the tower to see a balloon release. Grenfell United want to say a big thank you to everyone who has joined us today and who has stood with survivors and bereaved for the past three years. If you haven't already, um, please sign up to get updates and support the work of Grenfell United at www.grenfellunited.org. are being released from the top of the tower on behalf of the children of Grenfell. We would just like to say thank you all so, so much for joining us today and for being part of our community and continuing to remember the loved ones that were lost. <laughs> 